but yeah, amazing. So we've started this um, podcast with one question, and it's mostly to get to know um, what your inspiration was to get going in music and develop your career. So what was your aha moment? Um, that's a, it's a t- it's tough because I feel like there's a few different aha moments for different like points of engagement for me. But um, I think one aha moment was like, or maybe like a few aha mo- moments that contributed to my early interest in like independent music and supporting independent artists was when I'd go to call the office in London, Ontario, which is where I'm from. I'm from London, Ontario. And they have a venue there called Call the Office, which has been around for decades. And um, oh, someone just messaged me and said they can't hear us. They can't hear us. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> One moment. That's the, we're figuring it out. Today we a little, um, couldn't broadcast directly to Facebook as we've normally been doing. Um, but yeah, learning learning curve for the digital era. <laughs> yeah, there's. Should we just stop it and start it again? We might have to start and stop again. <laughs> it was a little practice run, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I apologize for this. I don't know if okay. those because it's coming in before now. We're not getting it. Am I right? Okay. Can you hear her? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, now they said they can hear you, Colleen. Oh, they can hear me. Yeah, I just get it. It does um, you, but as soon as you turned it on, she wasn't there anymore. Hmm. So I'm just let me try that again. It's like okay. a DJ yeah, where we're just gonna be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> can you ask Rachel Sorry. to talk for a second? Can you talk now? Hey, Rachel? hi, it's Rachel here, yeah. coming to you from Hell Quebec. Okay, we're just gonna because now she's back. Okay. Um, so I can get her to keep talking for a sec. Uh, want to keep talking? keep talking (laughs) i'm sitting here in my living room my slash office it's my aloe plant behind me it looks really happy it's very happy it's a bit out of control (laughs) um what artwork do you have on the wall this uh, this is a photograph that my partner has i don't know where it comes from over there is a poster from a uk band called gutter snipe that i booked a while ago nice Gutter Um, snipe i like the name yeah, they're like a noise project duo. They're really, really cool. Um, and then I have my record collection down here behind me. <laughs> nice. What was your most recent ad? <laughs> oh, um, well, <laughs> okay. This is sort of weird and like uh, self-centered, but I found this record from Stone's Throw that is like a homage record to this um, jazz pianist, called Weldon Irvine and my last name is Weldon but then I like I saw the cover and it says like Weldon and big look can you I don't know but does it is it a mirror image is it backwards for you it's backwards for me um well at the moment I can't see well this is my last name says it I like big big bold letters I sort of love the discovery of stuff like that like I found all this Harding because Aldous Huxley is like my favorite author and I just had this moment where I was like I wonder if anyone has the name Aldous and I looked it up and then I found Aldous Harding no way whoa she's amazing yeah she's amazing (laughs) that was like that was a nice find just based on a name no one although I don't have that name in my family but (laughs) I like the name Aldous it is a beautiful name Mm -hmm. is Aldous Huxley also from he's British um yes he's British sounds like a very UK name yeah, very like I love the name I'm surprised no one's name I don't know any Aldis's yeah and obviously like Aldis Harding it's not her real name but it's not oh okay I, no it's like a stage name mm. Liam's working real hard <laughs> yeah Liam good work I know you can't hear me but we'll figure it out if worst case scenario, we record on our own and then just sort of oh, we'll, post it to people. Yeah, we'll be we'll be back up. We'll just need you to start again. Okay. Look at my hair. Let's cut that down. <laughs> if everyone's just hearing my side of this right now, <laughs> it's like quite funny. 
I can show you another record I got recently. Yeah. Oh, it's heavy though, because it's a gatefold with an insert. Jackie Shane. Oh, nice. Um, Toronto artist who I think was performing actively in like the 70s or 60s in Toronto, like the queer scene. Oh, amazing. Um, but she's American and initially. Uh, it's a really cool like soul record. I think it was reissued on. I thought it was um, Light in the Attic, but I don't see their logo, so I'm not sure. Wait, did did you get it from Bandcamp? I, I, I got it from a local record store. Mm. Yeah, support the local record stores, everybody. <laughs> yeah, Record Center in Ottawa is amazing. They like just are great about ordering what we are looking for. Nice, yeah. I try to order it through them more often than ordering online. But it's nice with Bandcamp too, because they're doing their Bandcamp days. And yeah, like going direct to the artist as much as mm -hmm. possible. I think one is this Friday, right? Yeah. I'm hoping that everyone buys the t-shirts so I don't have to refold them. <laughs> Which t-shirts? I have so many t-shirts in my living room right now. <laughs> um, there's about, well, like all, all of the merch shirts that we have so mm. chad and women and uh yeah i got an eve jarvis t-shirt recently from you guys which i love nice <laughs> the, the unblonde discontinued that's right <laughs> yeah or, or at least a unique a unique print that will never be printed again yeah i love it it's uh, so weird to see inside I see myself three times right now oh <laughs> And it's all different paces, so I... <laughs> <laughs> Facebook. Can't trust them. No. <laughs> they won't let us broadcast properly. I'm sorry, guys. There should be a time in this. No worries. I like Shout out to Nick, Nick Schofield, who's the one texting me about the yeah, sound check. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, testing. I can't hear you, sorry. <laughs> um, let's see. We are glitchy today. Um, but we'll be back soon. I'm just telling Nicole. How was your last couple talks? Um, they've all been great. They're all unique, which I love because it's like everyone's stories. And it's just nice, refreshing to have these kind of talks rather than doomsday talks. Yeah, that's true. We live. Should we start again? Okay. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Let's do this again. It's the rewind. Um, <laughs> thanks for joining us or staying with us. Um, this is episode seven of Music Calgary's Sound Off Talks inspiration series. Um, Sound Off Music Talks is presented by Music Calgary, and we'd like to acknowledge that the project's funded in part by Factor, the Government of Canada, and Canada's private radio broadcasters. I'd also like to take a moment to acknowledge and recognize that Music Calgary is located in Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. Um, yeah, and today we're talking with Rachel Weldon, um, the creative director of DuBaser and the music programmer at SAW, amongst many, many other great projects and things she does. Um, so, hi, Rachel. Hey. <laughs> Um, I'm going to get you to sort of tell everyone watching a little bit about yourself and just tell us where you're from, what you do, and yeah, we'll go from there. Sure, yeah. Thank you so much for having me, Music Calgary and Colleen. Um, <clears throat> I'm Rachel Weldon. I'm, uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm based on the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin people on in Hull, Quebec, and I work mostly in Ottawa, Ontario, which is all Algonquin land. Um, I am a uh, music curator, an arts programmer, a creative producer, grant writer, uh, program manager. I do a bunch of different things. 
I'm the creative director of Debaser and also the founder. Um, we, Debaser is a nonprofit music, music presentation organization that um, exists to present and support and amplify creative artists and marginalized artists. I'm also the music programmer at SAW, which is an artist run center based in Ottawa. Um, one of the more established artist run centers in the country and the owner and operator of a venue called Club Saw. And I also do, yeah, like you said, a few, a bunch of other different things. I freelance as a, a producer and project manager and grant writer for a bunch of different artists and organizations. Mm -hmm. I've had the pleasure of working with you. You're a gem. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise. Yeah. Um, so this is our inspiration series. So the main point of the whole talk is to get your story about how you got started working in music um, and really anchoring into that aha moment that yeah. inspired you. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a tough question because I think I had like a few different aha moments for different points in my like advancement towards a music career. But I have to credit, uh, I grew up in London, Ontario, which is Southern Ontario near, um, near Toronto. And they have, a, they have a venue there that's been all ages for ever since I can remember. That was sort of like the, the main kind of small mid-sized venue in London. Um, and my, I think my first ever show, aside from like, I don't remember like a country show with my parents at like the local hall my first ever like di like independent music like punk show was death from above at mm. call the office nice. which was definitely like a formative experience and, and i also went to see sorry 2004 <laughs> i think it was like in and around that 2005 2004 maybe yeah around mm. there i was gonna say yeah 2015 but that's obviously not right no yeah 2004 or five amazing and <laughs> And I'd also like go to see I, my like favorite band when I was in high school was Controller Controller. Remember that band? Yes. Paper Bag Records. So band? funny because I was talking about both these bands literally a night ago. <laughs> really? And I have oh a gosh. Controller Controller magnet from the show, which is like 2004, which canceled because something happened. But yeah, definitely. Amazing. Or in that same same genre. <laughs> we yeah. Like. Yeah. Those are all sort of the sort of like punk disco-y, post-punk, glamorous. <laughs> oh yeah, music. when you're like 16, 15, you're like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> along with like metric and stuff like that, like all those bands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so that was definitely an early formative experience. And I think, I think that around then, I vote like, since I was a kid, I wanted to be a writer. Um, like I wanted to be a music journalist after I started going, getting really into like the music scene and so yeah, I started to just like write album reviews for my high school newspaper and then like another paper let me start to write things. So one of my, like one of my first ever interviews was with um, the Handsome Furs, like Dan Beckner and um, I forget the other person in that project's name, but uh, that was also a call the office. So those were all like really formative experiences for like my interest. Yeah, and like what kind of hooked me put the hooks in was it it was like a 100 percent all ages venue ontario is like a little unique in the way that venues allowed all ages and they just like quartered off yeah i it was like there wasn't like it wasn't like a section it was just like two big black x's on your hands that were like with super permanent heavy <laughs> yeah. sharpies yeah so that you couldn't wash them off in the bathroom but um yeah, it was like quite unique because even today I feel like it's it's hard to find a, a venue that's truly all ages and like mm -hmm. without having it having to be like having to be in a much higher cost for the promoter to be able to like hire extra security or like co like compensate for the, the loss at the bar. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciated and valued the fact that this venue had all, all of their shows were all ages. It was, you didn't totally. have to just like go to what you were allowed to. Yeah, I think that was like, really beneficial for my music experiences as well just like having that access to those venues and like having older people around is like awesome too because then you see what they're up to and you're like wow yeah I definitely had those <laughs> moments where I watched people and I was like I want to do what they do <laughs> totally but yeah that's cool and I love that we had the same band taste <laughs> yeah 
I had no I mean, idea. <laughs> so did everybody, every like aspiring indie kid in the mid 2000s <laughs> probably were into Oh, those. definitely. <laughs> I have a lot of those posters still from <laughs> Hamilton, but that's cool. Nice. So you started out, um, so a lot of like how you got started in a career though, or developing your career was writing for the paper. Yeah. Doing yeah. Reviews. Exactly. And that led me to doing radio. Uh, when I got to university in Ottawa and also volunteering with Weird Canada, which is a now sort of defunct blog slash like community organization that was a blog, like in its simplest definition, but also like did a bunch of other stuff, like ran a distro and had a festival at one point and just like represented a community of people who interested in like weird experimental or like non-mainstream music from across the country so it, it it was so great for learning a bunch from like I, I feel like I still consider the director of that organization Marie Flanagan like a role model for me and just like the her her values and her approach to like organizing and running a nonprofit, but also just the the community of volunteers across the country who would be running like DIY labels and having radio shows and being in cool bands and everyone just being like, hey, who do like, where do you see good shows in like Lethbridge or like, where do you, mm -hmm. you know, what's a good record store in Montreal? And it was just like a great kind of um, hive for finding out independent music yeah, resources. Definitely. Do you feel like there's space in the industry for another organization to come up? like to support that community or yeah I would love to see it I've actually I was talking about this with somebody recently it's like I wonder if there's any because now that I'm like a, a grant writer and a producer like now that I do like create these projects for a living I'm like is there something that we can create that sit like serves that same purpose mm -hmm. as Weird Canada um without maybe having to run a blog which is like a huge uh huge amount of work to run yeah. but the blog was very special yeah definitely yeah, and it would... gives like a platform for bands that might not get written about in mainstream press and it gave a voice to them like... yeah and as a result would like help those bands like realize projects like I feel like some people mm -hmm. you know things come about just because they know that there's a publication like Weird Canada willing to write about it yeah cool Mm -hmm. that's awesome so like a lot more of the writing side and then you got into radio in university yeah and then radio led me to like booking shows because uh yeah, like nice. a, yeah. <laughs> it's just like step by step totally <laughs> yeah it's like it's usually one thing and then you do something else to support the other thing exactly like I, I did something similar it's like I created posters and then I wanted to create more posters, so I book shows to create more posters <laughs> for the shows. And I was like, hmm, best of both. <laughs> yeah. But then it's like, yeah, you start building on each skill as you do it, which is cool. Mm -hmm. So you started yeah, booking it, shows to promote through your radio show? <laughs> yeah, kind of, like to have content, I guess. Or, I mean, mostly because bands who I would play on the radio, like Brent, bands who are friends of mine. One, the first show I ever booked was for this Toronto band, Doom Squad. Mm -hmm. um and they just needed a show in Ottawa and they're like do you want to present it as your radio show I was like yeah I'll try that sounds fun and I loved it and I guess that was another aha moment like that show went really well and it was really fun and I loved working with the band so I tried it again and kept doing it nice um are you still presenting shows under the baser in Ottawa yeah, like in theory, that is our ongoing activity, though. The pandemic has put a stop to that for now. Hopefully, mm -hmm. we'll be able to do something next year. But we're, we're working on other programming that's non-in-person live music for the moment. <laughs> yeah, totally. Are you doing any like backyard shows or any like just smaller, higher ticketed priced kind of programming? Or is that like something to think about for the future? Yeah, I, I really wanted to do like an outdoor show this summer, but it this summer just kind of slipped away. And I have still like, I mean, there's still so much uncertainty, even with things reopening now, just the comfort level of people. And um, yeah, but I think next year we like we got the baser got some funding to 
start like launch this event series which was supposed to launch this fall and is now postponed so i think now that it's starting to dawn on me that the pandemic's not going away as soon as we thought that i think it's i'm starting to imagine what it what this event could look like in like phase three which is what ontario's in right now like masks on and everything distanced and everything safe so mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Well, I'm happy you're going to continue moving, moving the needle forward. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of work that goes into these things. And like over time, you don't want to just like pull the plug on anything. Just because. absolutely. So, yeah. Hold that info. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what are you filling your time with at the moment if you're not doing live shows? Well, in terms of Debaser, we actually are pretty active. Like it's, it's been kind of a blessing to take some time off from our regular programming because we've been meaning to do like stuff like policy development and like board recruitment and nonprofit foundational stuff that we haven't done yet. And we just incorporated like this year, it's all very recent for us. So it's kind of nice to have some time to devote to it and like make sure we're doing it well and in a way that sets it up so that like we can be a sustainable and equitable organization going forward. Um, and like this moment of like Black Lives Matter, civil rights um, movement, like progressive change is like also really uh, beneficial for like an organization that is run by white people at the moment. And we're trying to change that. And like we, um, I think, yeah, it's just really, it's kind of a great moment to have started a nonprofit because we have, time and we have like this sort of like uh environment to be able to like inform how we build this thing mm -hmm. which is cool um what did you study in school because i know you do have some political passions yeah but uh english lit oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah i Thanks. wanted to go into journalism mm -hmm. um i didn't get into the carlton journalism program so i ended up in english literature which i loved i and I, I think it kind of like, I honestly, I think that everything that I I do in music kind of comes back to like storytelling in some way. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted to be a writer and that was obviously connected to that. And like put it like presenting events and uh, exhibiting artists. It, it's all kind of like in my, in my mind, it's all sort of under like the, the undercurrent is like telling a story or like making an experience, making something that's like special. Mm -hmm. yeah so I think it yeah, all comes back to like it. <laughs> mm -hmm. definitely because yeah you want to tell the story from a genuine perspective and like sort of in a romantic perspective as well to like draw people into it yeah so, and same with management like so. you know this well like I mean I feel like every album campaign or like creative project that's released is sort of like an exercise in telling that story mm -hmm. to the audience to the press yeah, and carving carving it out in a way that is like still, I'm very much about the genuine story. You don't want to like make up the story and you don't want to like ever lean on an element of it that's um, you think is clickbaity, <laughs> even though that probably serves some. But I think just as being as grounded and being genuine to the artist as possible is great. Yeah. Um, yeah, amazing. I'm getting all distracted because now I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah. It's like so much, there is so much to do and that that's awesome. And then, so if there was potentially any great advice you could give an artist who just maybe just starting out, what would you say to them? Um, well, so for artists or for people looking to- Anybody, yeah, industry, artists, anyone mm. that might have like a project in mind or feel inspired to want to get into music, but maybe uh, don't know how, I don't know, to step yeah. into doing it or, yeah. What I, advice would you give somebody right now? <laughs> I My advice is for someone looking in, to get involved in like, yeah, the industry or in organizing or whatever, anything like that is to volunteer, like to just get out and get involved in whatever aspect you can like whether it's community radio which is a very like open door typically or like trying to hunt down internships at different companies that do music things like that's how I certainly got my foot in the door and also just like trying out your own projects like you don't need much to start 
a DIY label, like you don't need a bunch of capital if you're not, you know, pressing it everything to vinyl. Like you can probably do it pretty DIY and or mm -hmm. starting a musical project can be done with your computer and your computer only. Um, there's lots you can do by just like trying and fa maybe failing, but mm -hmm. trying. Totally. Failure is part of the game. <laughs> totally. I, like, I try to tell people how many no's I get in a day. It's like 95% of your day will be a no, but that 5% or even that 1% is that, that yes sort of totally. moves things forward and that's like where you get the reward. Yeah. But yeah, I, I like the advice of just getting out there and offering whatever skill you have to like whoever around, like whatever community is around you or whoever you connect with. Yeah. I, I also like recognize that, I mean, I had the, the privilege of free time to be able to put into things like, like Weird Canada and radio because I like, I was a student, but I didn't have to work a full time job to like cover my tuition. And I'm just, I had the privilege of being able to do that. Not everybody has that privilege if like you're a parent or a full time student or whatever. So mm -hmm. I also like, I mean, and this is my like grant writer hat. There's lots of like, <laughs> professional development funding available for people who like have an arts practice or have you know are have just like a little bit of experience that they're looking to expand on in the arts um mm -hmm. canada council and probably your provincial funders or your local like your, your municipal funders have programs that are not tons of money but enough to like maybe pay for a month of interning at that place or cover mm -hmm. your living expenses as you like get a mentorship with somebody that you like so yeah I think like yeah common thread too is like you can do a lot with like the bare minimal because you can push the push things forward if you're motivated with say even five hundred dollars and like totally if, if you're at the beginning stages you probably need to learn a lot so you do a lot more in-house than later on when you hire a lot more people on mm -hmm. but yeah you could go find like even a micro grant of like 500 can go a long way yeah that What's could that? probably cover like a week-long mentorship if you <laughs> yeah. you know something like that yeah and then that mentorship goes on your cv and like makes you look super serious about what you're doing and then you apply to that job and it's noticed you know yeah definitely um so are you still working at megaphono and doing management as well or are those past projects yeah, those are currently past. I left uh, Kelp Management was where I was before in uh, March 2019 and my role at Megaphono. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but that, I learned so much there working with John Bartlett, who's the owner of that company and working with artists like Lido Pimienta and Andy Schaff was like such an enriching experience and huge learning experience for me. I was pretty young when I got to Kelp. I, I worked there for about five years and um, like three years as part time, and then got promoted into a like a management position after that. So, yeah, I learned like everything I know about the industry practically from them. How did that connect for you? Between like what I was doing before, what I'm doing now. Um, how did you connect with Kelp Music at that point? Okay, yeah. You started with them. I mean, Ottawa is a pretty small music industry, like very small, and I knew someone who was working there they had just like lost one of their part-time like administrative staff. And this person knew that I was like organizing shows under Debaser and like volunteering with Weird Canada and volunteering with the radio. So they just recommended me to John, who's the owner for the job. And it was, it wasn't like a public call. They just knew that I was organized and I could probably handle it. So mm -hmm. yeah, like you don't even know sometimes when those like those projects that you do will pay off because people just notice that you're, taking initiative and yes like 100 percent. i think everyone has their ear to the ground on who's doing what and the community like canada and i would say the world's small <laughs> like, like everyone knows each other so it's like if you just put yourself out there a little bit people really notice that and probably will be more willing to bring you into the fold at a different point mm -hmm. or whenever they need somebody so yeah everything goes a long way over time totally yeah. That's awesome. I'm very happy to. And as you, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I was gonna say you probably know that like there's a lot of jobs in the arts that don't get posted publicly. Like they're just sort of word of mouth and like yeah, you know. So it's if you're doing what you can be doing to get attention, 
or like demonstrate that you're have the skills or like are trying to develop the skills then yeah people notice so yeah definitely yeah go to every conference you can it's the best way to meet everybody or digital conference that you can mm -hmm. at the moment um our new world <laughs> But yeah, there's lots of people out there looking. And so just putting yourself out there is like a really great way to, I don't know, start something. <laughs> totally. And there's lots of holes to fill. Like people do graduate in the industry and it's like you create something really arty and like focused, but then maybe you just grow out of it yourself. And the project, that's why projects don't last forever in the music industry mm -hmm. or arts community because it's unique to the people working it. And if there's not new people sort of stepping into those roles, then there's room for something new to come. Yeah. So it's all pretty um, evolutionary, I guess. Yeah, and I feel like skills, you don't even know you're developing like good social media or like digital, you know, literacy skills to use a, a jargony buzzword, but um, yeah, like even if you don't like even if you're just like really good at TikTok and you don't even think that's a like monetizable skill. Like there's a lot of older folks who have been in the industry for a long time who have no idea what what their like what potential there is for business with something like TikTok. So Yeah. TikTok comes up a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in these conversations. And I feel like it's like well yeah, in this in these conversations, but just in general, it's like it's the whole new skill. So if you know TikTok approach <laughs> approach people and be like hey i know tiktok and they'll be like whoa that's beyond my knowledge come on take in. my money <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> take everything <laughs> but yeah it's like there's so many things constantly coming up so if you have like if you grow and build something within a new platform it definitely can serve someone who maybe doesn't know it yet yeah i mean i i have thoughts that I should get a TikTok account on a daily. <laughs> I know, I don't have one yet either. Ugh. Well, we should follow <laughs> each other when we get one. Yeah, we should. <laughs> it's gonna happen. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, I'm not too sure um, how long we've been talking at this point. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, I think um, your story is amazing. And I think you are one of the hardest working music industry Aww. folk in the in Canada that I know of and you you do a very good job at like balancing your like your political understandings of everything with the work that you do and how you serve the community so that's really great thanks so, yeah. I'm trying I mean yeah I I feel like it's a I do work hard I work really hard but it's also like kind of a privilege to have a job in the arts like there's so few and Mm -hmm. So I just want to be responsible with that privilege, you know? <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Totally. It's like all we, all we can all do for each other. It's like, just show up and be the best, better person you can be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like help anyone that shows up in the same way, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Sort of new and, agey to say it that way, but. <laughs> no, I hear you. <laughs> yeah. And like, be, be generous with your knowledge and your skills, like help mm -hmm. steward in the new young younger folks like I appreciated that with the folks who stewarded me in and I want to like try to do that for more folks as well I can um how could people touch base with you if they're looking to connect with um, in Ottawa yeah well so the baser is probably maybe like uh, I have a few different email addresses for a few different roles but you can reach me at hello at debaser d-e-b-a-s-e-r dot c-a or find a baser online at deb a-S-E-R, debaser.ca. Um, I'm on Facebook, just under my name, and Instagram. My handle is pink underscore veil underscore. Um, maybe I, I can post it in the comments or something. Nice. Awesome. It's been very yeah. lovely to chat with you. Likewise. Um, thanks for your patience with our, our fun Facebook integration today. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> and good luck. good luck with your uh, office transition. Yeah, I know. That's probably why I'm, I'm so distracted today. <laughs> Moving, you're just like the logistics of it all. Moving a record label, <laughs> like 2,000 records, you know. It's good oh my gosh. Yeah, I've been there. I've moved storage spaces for kelp records <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a couple times. Yeah. You get your workout in. Yeah, totally. That's what I'm preparing 
preparing yeah. for right now. But yeah, it was <laughs> awesome to connect. And I know Likewise. we'll talk soon. <laughs> yeah. See ya. Bye, Rachel.